The last example that we're going to look at in this section is probably the one you've been waiting for, and that is actually writing and reading data to and from files. Now, there's lots of ways to do this in the .NET framework. The .NET framework provides a whole bunch of ways for writing data to and reading from files. There's probably more ways to do this than there are ways to order sushi. But we're only going to look at some of the more simple ways of doing this. I mentioned earlier that we're not going to get deep into streams. You can feel free to go do that as an extra credit exercise. What we're going to look at is the higher level order functions for reading and writing data. So for writing data, there's some really simple functions. There's file.appendAllText, which simply takes a bunch of text content and appends it to the end of an existing file. There is the write all bytes and write all lines which, as their name implies, for write all bytes, you can just give it an array of bytes. For write all lines, you give it an array of strings, and it will write out the content of the file. And then there's file.write all text. Now, unlike append all text, write all text will replace the existing contents of the file. So if you want to just replace the content, use write all text. If you want to add to the existing content, use append all text. Not surprisingly, there are some counterparts for reading data. There is read all bytes. And as you might have guessed, this will read all the content of a file as a bunch of binary bytes. But for the purposes of our exercise, we're going to be working with text. So we'll probably use things like read lines and read all lines and read all text. This will actually read the contents of a file as text content. So let's just jump over to the code and actually start exercising some of this so you can see how it works. Okay, in my reading and writing data example, I've got my snippets open and I've scrolled down to the reading and writing files section. So I'm going to start off by copying over the setup code, which are these lines right here. So I'll copy those and paste them in. I'll put them in my main function. All right, so before we go any further, let's take a look at what's going on here. So if you've been following the examples up until now, you're probably familiar with the first line here on line 14. This is the file path. We're going to be using the environment class to get the path to the My Documents folder. But we're going to be doing something a little bit different this time. If you watch the section on the Path Helper class, which is previous, you'll probably notice that they're using a Path Helper section here. Instead of using the backslash character hard coded into my example file.txt file name, I'm using the path dot directory separator car constant, which tells me what the separator character for this file system happens to be. Now here on this version of Windows and .NET, it will be a backslash, but it might be different based upon what platform you happen to be running on. So I'm going to just use this constant right here so that I don't have to hard code a directory separator into my code, which is never a good idea. So I'm taking steps here to make my code work cross platform. All right, so now that we've got the path built up, we're going to see if the file exists. And if you watched that particular example, you'll know that we use the file.exists function to do that here on line 18. So we'll see if the file does not exist. So we'll put that little not operator right here in front of the file.exists call. So if the file does not exist, then we're going to create it by using the write all text function. So we'll have a string variable here on line 20 which will be the contents of the file. And the content is going to be a string called this is a text file. And once again, I'm using my environment class to figure out what the new line character is for this particular platform. So once again, rather than hard coding in a backslash R or backslash N or whatever escape sequence happens to be the new line character on this particular file system, I'll just use the new line constant for this particular environment. Then I'm going to write out to the console that we're creating the file, and then I'll use the file.writeAllText method. And writeAllText takes two arguments. The first is the path to write to. The second is the text content that we are writing out. So I'm going to build this, and I'm going to run it. And you can see that the creating the file string got written out because the file did not exist in the My Documents folder. So now we've created it, and if you want to go ahead and check your My Documents folder to see if it exists, you can go ahead and do that. I'm just going to keep on moving on here. All right, so let's go back to the snippets. Now let's use the append all text method to add content to the file. I'll copy, and we'll paste, and we'll save. Okay, so I'm going to build this, and now I'm going to run it. 
Okay, now you can see that I'm adding content to the file. Let's go back and look at the code and see what happened here. The file already exists, so the if statement here on lines 18 through 23 did not need to execute. The file's content is getting appended, so this line right here, adding content to the file, got written out. Then we use the append all text to add the added text string, which I'm building up right here, into the file, and that writes the content out to the file. So just to make sure that things are working okay, let's go ahead and open the file up so we can look at the contents. So here I am in my documents folder. Let's open up example file, and you can see here is this is a text file, and this is text added to the file. Well, that's great, but I'd rather not have to open up Notepad to make sure that the content is getting added correctly. So let's see if we can read the contents and display the contents into the console. All right, so back here in the code, let's scroll down. All right, now we're going to read the contents of the file. So I'm going to copy these lines right here. And back in my code, I'm going to paste them in. So we're going to write out to the console that we are reading the file. And you can see right here, we're writing out that the current contents of the file are and a little separator line to separate the content. Then we're going to use the read all text static method on the file class to get the current content. The current content will come back as a string. So we've got a string variable right here on line 35, which will hold the results of the read all text function on the file path. Once we have the current content, we will write out the current content to the console, and then we'll put a little line separator to increase readability right here. So we're going to build. Okay, the build succeeds. We run it, and you can see that we've now added content to the file, and the current contents of the file are, and we've got a couple of lines, this is a text file, and then we've got text added to the file twice. So I'm going to hit return. I'm going to run it one more time, because each time we run it, this line right here, the text added to the file, is going to get added. So I'm going to run it again, and you can see that now that there's three, and then I'll run it again, and you can see that now that there's four. Okay, let's go back to the code. One more thing I want to do here. I want to show you how to read the contents of the lines of the file using the read all lines function. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in over here. This is just another way of reading the contents of the file. So I'm going to paste that in here. And for now, I'm just going to comment out these lines. And I'm going to uncomment these lines so that we can actually run the code. So whereas the read all text function on the file class will read all the content, the read all lines will read the lines and return an array of strings. So read all text comes back with one string, read all lines comes back with an array of strings, and that's this right here on line 40. So I'm declaring an array of strings, and that's this contents variable right here. Then I call the read all lines function, which will return an array. And then here's our old friend, the for each function. So I'm going to loop over each string that is in the contents array. And I'm going to call each one of those strings the variable s. And inside my loop, I'm going to just write out whatever that s string is. So let's build. And I'm going to run. And you can see that we get the same results, only at this time, Instead of reading the content as one long string, we've read the content as an array of strings. All right, that brings us to the close of this example and this chapter. So I highly encourage you to go explore the file class and do some of your own experiments working with reading and writing data to files.